welcome back to Captain Sailing. We're going to be out sailing today again. Um, of course, we're not allowed to stay overnight, so it's going to be a day sail again. Now, let me show you what we're going to be doing. So, we're here in Weymouth, and the plan today is to sail along the coastline here and stop in Warbarrow Bay or, or Mute Bay as it's known as well. So, Law of Cove is just around the corner where we sometimes go as well. Now, obviously, with the restrictions we got on, we're not allowed to stay overnight, so and we got to sail where we got to sail to, we got to sail back. And along this coastline, we can probably get past St. Albans Head pretty easily. Um, Studland and Swan Edge, we could probably get around there. Um, but then we've got to just be careful about the overfalls, but also making sure that we time the bridge coming back. So it's a bit of a bit of a rush to get around here. And then by the time we get around here, we might get the anchor down and then um, basically be coming back. So that's not really what we want to be doing. So we look around this coast and obviously Warbarrow Bay is a pretty nice bay for us to stop in. Uh, we've not been there before actually, we normally go to Lulworth, um, but they're protected from the, the same kind of windage as well. So if you've got anything in the south, then really you can't really stay anywhere on this coast anyway, because you'll be blown uh, onto a lee shore, so we don't, we don't want to be doing that. So the plan is to leave Weymouth and uh, sail along here. The wind is meant to be coming from the west, so it should be a downwind sail, famous last words. Um, and then we'll be sailing back upwind as well a bit. Um, forecast is a bit cloudy, rainy perhaps, um, but we'll see how we get on. Okay, so anybody, I just thought I'd share a bit of a tip with you really. I, suppose, oh, I don't know where it really is a tip, but it's something that I find um, quite useful anyway. So on the boat, uh, if you've just got normal fenders like this, if you've got white fenders, sometimes they get sand and grit on them and this kind of stuff. And then if they're just hanging down the side of the boat, you've got that grit and it'll end up basically sanding your um, top sides or your side of your boat down. Uh, and your gel coat. So you can get fender socks. Um, now fender socks are ridiculously expensive. Normally for one single sock, not even personalised, it's normally around 20 quid or something like that is normally what I find for, for this size fender. Now this material is a stretchy uh, stretchy tube. Um, stretchy tube? I can't yeah. what they call it now. Is it a stretchy tube? No, it comes on a big roll in it. Yeah, big, a bit, basically it comes on a big roll and it's already um, seamed up. So it's basically just a big, big long tube. And then all I've done is I've taken a measurement of a fender. And then uh, if I turn this quickly inside out. So I've taken the measurement of a fender and then on the corners, I've just sewn uh, the corners up. So it creates a bit of a pocket at the bottom. So you get this uh, little shape like that. And then on the top side, all I've done is I've folded down the sides and created a bit of a pocket here for some draw cord to go through, so it'll tie onto the top. Now the purpose of that is just so it don't fall off the fender. Now this, in total, uh, the rope cost me uh, about three pounds, I think it was. The tube material per fender was like a pound. So very cheap. Uh, when it starts adding up and you've got quite a few to do and obviously you can have get the the sock, sock itself in whatever colour you fancy and if you're really good with a sewing machine I suppose you could probably start embroidering it or sticking your boat name on there but I'm not too bothered with that so you see what I mean that is basically all I've done there is I've just sewn around those edges so it creates a nice a nice bottom to it and then at the top all I've got is my, um, my draw cords and basically, I, I mean, I've made these quite long because I had to stretch it over the top of the fender. Um, and we'll just tie those up like that. And then I'll cut those off and, and sear them. And that is a nice looking fender, if I do say so myself. And if you do want a drawing uh, to see how we've done this in more detail, check out our Patreon page because it'll be up there with uh, a couple of other sketches we've done, such as the, um, the windless plate and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, check out our Patreon and then we'll be up there.
we're just waiting for the uh, bridge to open. Uh, a lot of people go backwards and forwards and this kind of stuff, but what we tend to do is we just tend to sit into the wind and just let the boat drift a little bit. If you do start going backwards, then just put a little bit forward on. Um, so what we're doing now, the wind's coming from over the, our starboard side, so I'm just going to turn into the wind and wait for the boat to basically hold itself where it is. If, it does, if the bow just start blowing off, um, either way to the wind, just put a bit of throttle on and go forward. But you only need it on tick over on a boat like this. It'll be interesting to know how long keels do this kind of thing. I've never really sailed a long keel, so I don't really know. I don't really know how they handle, to be honest, in, in tight quarters. But just like this, with, with no throttle on, you can just basically sit, sit where you are and drift. Got plenty of time. 10 o'clock bell. 10 o'clock bridge lift. Where is it we're um, going to be? Uh, we're going to hopefully go over to Warbarrow Bay. <laughs> Wheelbarrow Bay? Warbarrow. Warbarrow. Warbarrow Bay. Or Mute Bay, one of those two. We've not been there before, have we? No, we haven't. We've got our sails up, uh, we've got about uh, 14 knots coming across our starboard uh, bow, well, across our starboard bow pretty much. We're not close hauled, uh, almost on a beam reach but not quite. And we're doing roughly around five and a half knots across the ground, which is fairly happy, I'm very happy with that. I've uh, got a little bit of a reef in the head sail, just because it's a bit gusty. Um, yeah, and we're sailing over to, like I said, we're sailing over to Mute Bay and hopefully we should be there in about an hour or two worst case um, and hopefully the rain holds off.
turn this turn a bit, it's, uh, it's coming right from the south now, which means the bays that we kind of wanted to go into are probably all going to be a bit untenable, to be honest, for anchoring in. Um, wind's picked up a bit as well. Uh, get a bit of a heel on, but we are doing like, you know, six knots now, so we are, we are steaming through the water a bit. But we'll go a bit further, see how, see how we get on down here, but if it gets a bit... The problem is that the, anch the anchorage uh, is exposed to the south um, and the southwest. So we won't be able to stay in there or won't be able to anchor. So it gets to a point where we only can go so far because we only can day sail um, and we kind of want to stop somewhere. So just sailing out somewhere and, and then sailing back seems a bit silly, really. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll carry on sailing a bit further and, and see what the wind's doing because the wind's meant to be shifting further around to the west, um, which means we can anchor in there. Um, but I don't want to anchor in on a lee shore, basically. sailing a boat. <laughs> I don't know. We've decided to go back into the marina because there's a bit of a squall coming over Weymouth, Weymouth Bay. Um, and it was a bit, it was a bit minging. It was very wet. <laughs> it was a bit wet. We couldn't turn the boat very well. So we've gone back into the shelter. See, this is nice sailing, this is. This is nice sailing. I don't know why, but whenever I talk on camera, I end up sounding like a northern man from Yorkshire. Sorry to anyone from Yorkshire. <laughs> but this is my first time, actually. First, second time steering the boat. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you do. I don't. You're really. doing a good job at it, anyway. Well, I'm just, I'm just going that way. I decided to come back um, because, well, there's two couple of reasons really. Uh, first of all, is the anchorage we were looking at because the wind shifted around and meant that we couldn't really anchor there because it was blowing us onto the shore. Um, throughout the whole of that south bit, anyway, there's not really any tenable bay phase if the wind's coming from the south. And also, it started raining and it started chucking it down, so it wasn't particularly that pleasant. So, we sailed all the way windward going there close hauled and we pretty much sailed all close hauled going all the way back to the wind shifted around. Um, yeah not the best weather but we did get our sailing I suppose so it's fine. I just I just want to get to, um, sailing a bit further because then we don't have to fight with the wind either one way or coming back. It would be better if we could just sail to a destination and actually stay there so I'm looking forward to being able to stay on the boat to be honest. Um, can't come soon enough but we'll see. So we're just going to go on to just a bit early for the bridge lift so we're probably just going to go and tie up somewhere before we go through the bridge and then get the boat back on the mooring and uh, before the next rain cloud comes in and then have some lunch and then probably be back home to be honest yeah we'll see you next time <laughs>